much for the uh, invitation and the kind introduction, Dr. Ali. Um, <coughs> so, um, Dr. Uh, Ahmed and Dr. Riyad made uh, things easier for me to uh, uh, discuss, so hopefully we can uh, skip some of the slides and uh, finish early and go uh, for Jum'a prayer uh, altogether. Um, so I'm going to talk about um, first-line therapies in uh, uh, adolescent and young adults with ALL, role of anti-CD20 monoclonal antibodies, role of TKIs, uh, MRD uh, uh, use in, in treatment of adults with ALL, lenatumumab, and then at the end, allogenic uh, stem cell transplant. I just wanted to start with a case. So this is a 30 years old um, male who presented with um, two weeks history of fatigue and bruising. His CBC showed a hemoglobin of 8.1, platelet of 35, and white blood cell count of uh, 26. His bone marrow biopsy and aspiration showed 80% uh, blasts and um, was consistent with uh, pre uh, CD20 negative. Um, his molecular and cytogenetics um, came back as negative for Philadelphia chromosome. Um, so how would you treat him? So we all uh, heard from the discussion in the previous um, talks that pediatric inspired protocol is probably the um, answer in this uh, situation. Just going through the SEER uh, uh, data, the uh, ALL is the um, uh, rare type of acute leukemia in adults. Um, it's mostly diagnosed in, in pediatric, um, and uh, about uh, 20 to 15 percent of acute leukemias in adults are ALL. Unfortunately, the um, survival outcomes are not as good as uh, pediatric in, in adults. This is not only because um, our pediatric colleagues are uh, more handsome and clever than us. Um, it's also because the disease itself is different. Um, there is more high-risk molecular abnormalities that happen as we age. Um, the um, figure here we can see in the lower um, corner there, BCR able is more common in adults compared to the uh, pediatric. MLL um, rearrangement also um, is more common in, in adults, as well as um, hypodiploidy, which are, are all uh, high-risk features in ALL. Um, there is also uh, patient-specific factors that outlined by Dr. Absi, um, psychological and behavioral factors that uh, are different from pediatric, follow-ups and uh, adherence to therapy is, is a problem in adults, as well as um, uh, uh, biological factors as we age, our organs are more sensitive to chemo and toxicity is, is higher, so we tend to um, lower the dose um, and sometimes um, decrease the efficacy uh, if we uh, faced, for example, with uh, elevated liver enzymes during the uh, chemotherapy, the intense chemotherapy. So that could be also factor in the uh, poor outcomes of survival in the adults. This is the WHO classification of um, acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Um, so there is the uh, acute lymphoblastic leukemia um, not otherwise specified. And there is the ones with the recurrent gene abnormalities, um, most uh, commonly the uh, translocation 922, uh, 411, and the hypodiploidy, hyperdiploidy. There is also, I wanted to outline the BCR able like ALL, uh, which is um, also uh, more common in adult. Um, I'm not sure um, how often we uh, try to go further and test for it. It's um, uh, associated with inferior outcomes similar to the BCR able um, and uh, should uh, be considered at the diagnosis. Uh, T cell lymphoblastic uh, leukemia is about uh, 20 to 15 percent of the uh, acute lymphoblastic leukemia in adults as well. The NCCN risk stratification um, 
reached a consensus on the high-risk cytogenetics, um, translocation 922 and 411, complex cytogenetics more than five, and low hypodiploidy are considered high risk. The highest is probably the first two, the uh, translocation 922 and 411. Um, high white cell count, um, more than 100 in T cell and more than uh, 30 in B cell. Uh, some of the studies, um, one actually French study, did not really uh, correlate um, uh, that this is a high risk feature, but uh, especially if the translocations are there and the MRD uh, has highest uh, impact on the prognosis compared to the, just the white cell count. The pediatric inspired protocols have been uh, the new um, uh, practice in most of the centers. And um, unfortunately, uh, this is all uh, through studies that are not uh, randomized control trials, but this is uh, the uh, best evidence that we have right now uh, based on single arm studies and comparative studies that are not randomized control trials. This schedule is um, showing some of the studies. Um, there is the uh, CCG uh, study, Dana-Farber study, which included patients up to the age of 60 as well. There is the Giral study, which included uh, patients uh, uh, up to 60. And it showed improved uh, overall survival and uh, this uh, event-free survival. Uh, so, this is just an example of how many um, single arm studies uh, there. The um, study that was published in 2008 um, by Stock in US, um, that was presented by Dr. Uh, Absi as well, um, and uh, it showed um, significant improvement if we used uh, pediatric inspired protocol in this uh, example. Uh, the CCG was uh, used and um, in uh, 2003, another uh, study was published. Um, those studies are um, not randomized control trials. They were uh, comparing it to retrospective uh, data and uh, repeated studies uh, after uh, this study, uh, these two studies showed um, significant improvement and uh, uh, led to the adoption of pediatric inspired protocol. The major differences in, in pediatric inspired protocol is that we use more corticosteroids, uh, asparaginase, um, vincristine with higher uh, doses and frequency, and the frequency of intrathecal methotrexate. This is a meta-analysis that summarized the um, uh, pediatric inspired protocols in uh, adults. It was published in 2012. Um, they screened about 2,000 um, uh, studies, reached about um, 17 studies after the screening. Uh, afterward, nine of those uh, were uh, excluded, and only 11 met the uh, criteria for the meta-analysis. Again, none of those studies were randomized control trials, and the um, overall survival uh, pro uh, disease-free survival and uh, relapse rate, all were in favor of the pediatric inspired protocols. So we have um, 25 uh, comparisons of outcomes with pediatric and adult regimens of ALL, and one meta-analysis, and all favoring the pediatric regimens except two. Uh, one was the MD Anderson, the hyper -CVAD, uh, protocol, uh, which did not um, uh, replicate in other uh, uh, studies. And the other one uh, was a French study, and they compared um, a pediatric inspired protocol to an adult protocol, but that adult protocol included uh, asparaginase in it. Uh, so uh, it's difficult to draw a conclusion from those uh, two studies. So I think most of the uh, Centers that treat um, young adults with uh, ALL are adopting uh, pediatric inspired protocols based on those uh, results. 
pediatric inspired protocols are uh, intensive uh, protocols that require lots of um, visits, lots of uh, chemo infusions, and uh, carries a higher risk for toxicities. So supportive care in this situation is, is crucial. Uh, prevention of tumor lysis is very important. Fertility preservation in this um, group of patients is very important. Um, infections are um, high, and patients should be uh, considered for prophylactic um, antibiotics, especially uh, PCP prophylaxis, and transfusion uh, support. I will also add the uh, social support that we need with those uh, patients as well. Uh, we need uh, more comprehensive care around um, dealing with such um, intensive and long uh, protocols. The next point I will, wanted to mention the role of uh, TKI in Philadelphia positive ALL. Um, Philadelphia uh, positive ALL uh, is, is a, a very difficult disease to treat in the past. Um, only 10% ach achieve long-term benefits from standard chemo alone. Addition of tyrosine kinase inhibitor have resulted into uh, higher CR up to 90 to 95%. Uh, compared to historical control, uh, TKI um, led to um, three-year disease-free survival and overall survival uh, rate um, uh, higher uh, um, without, uh, compared to without um, TKI. Uh, disease-free survival was 62% versus 14%, and overall survival 55% uh, versus 15%. So very significant improvement in the um, Philadelphia positive uh, patients. The choice of TKI is uh, controversial. Uh, imatinib and desatinib have both um, been studies. Uh, desatinib can penetrate uh, blood-brain barrier. Desatinib can be effective in patients with uh, resistance to imatinib or intolerable to imatinib. Um, so um, patients um, can be started on imatinib and then switch to desatinib if they um, uh, did not tolerate it. Or um, patients with CNS disease, then the uh, prefer preferred choice would be uh, desatinib. And then um, the issue of continuing TKI indefinitely is, uh, again, very uh, important, controversial, but will um, uh, uh, the uh, addition of um, Allogenic stem cell transplant also play a role in, in deciding afterward. Rituximab in ALL, um, CD20 um, is less commonly expressed than CD19 in pre-VLL, 41%. CD20 expression is associated with adverse outcome, um, and this suggests that targeting this molecule may affect um, outcomes. There is randomized um, uh, clinical trial that was uh, published in New England Journal of Medicine in 2017. Um, they uh, randomized patients 18 to 59 years of age, CD20 positive pre-BLL. Uh, they used BFM-based um, chemotherapy regimen, which is a pediatric-inspired protocol, and randomized patients whether to receive rituximab or not. Um, this study showed a two-year event-free survival improvement from 52 to 65 uh, percent, and um, this was um, a practice-changing study that led to um, addition of rituximab to the pediatric-inspired protocol. Some of the uh, centers were using rituximab uh, before based on um, other um, uh, data. Minimal residual disease was discussed with Dr. Uh, Riyadh in the uh, previous uh, lectures. Uh, particularly in uh, pediatric early, MRD has been used to detect uh, response and risk stratify patients. Um, it can be done either through multicolor flow cytometry, PCR for immunoglobulin or TCR uh, gene rearrangement, or next generation uh, sequencing. Um, this is a study that was also presented in the previous uh, lecture um, uh, in, uh, uh, was published in Blood 2006. Uh, they randomized patients, um, adult with uh, ALL, into um, 
sorry, the um, uh, dead um, PCR, uh, minimal residual disease for adult patients with uh, ALL at uh, day 11, uh, day 24, and uh, week uh, plus 16, and separated the patients based on their results into low risk, intermediate risk, or high risk. The um, disease-free survival and overall survival curve have um, nicely separated those patients uh, based on their uh, risk and led to the adoption of using more MRD in ALL, which um, uh, is an area of uh, um, uh, in investigation and right now uh, treatment in patients uh, who have uh, MRD positivity. Uh, blinatumumab is approved medication to use in MRD positive uh, patients after uh, induction uh, treatment for uh, ALL. Uh, blinatumumab is a bite um, antibody that has CD3 and CD19 um, and bind to the cytotoxic T cells and the uh, B lymphocytes lead to the activation of the um, cytotoxic T cells and proliferation which lead to the um, uh, apoptosis of the uh, blasts. This is the um, uh, publication in blood 2018 that led to the approval of the blinatumumab in the MRD positive ALL. Um, MRD positive patient received one cycle of blina. 78% uh, of um, uh, those patients achieved complete molecular uh, response. Uh, complete MRD respond responders have um, improved um, relapse-free survival and overall survival compared to non-responders. Uh, which was um, also translated into overall uh, survival uh, difference, which was uh, significant. The ASH um, 2019 late-breaking abstracts were uh, announced yesterday, and uh, this is uh, w uh, the first um, late-breaking abstract that will be uh, presented. Um, randomized phase three trial of blinatumumab versus chemotherapy as post uh, reinduction therapy in high and intermediate risk first relapse of B acute lymphoblastic leukemia in uh, children and young adults. So the uh, results are uh, promising and we'll have more information after uh, the presentation. So back to the case, uh, we have um, this patient. He was uh, treated with uh, pediatric inspired protocol he um, achieved complete molecular response, and now on the maintenance phase of the protocol, what's your uh, next step? Do you, to refer, do you uh, refer him for allogenic stem cell transplant in CR1 or not? This is a um, randomized uh, uh, study that uh, was published in 2000, um, which included 572 patients uh, that uh, uh, are less than 40 years in uh, CR1. Uh, they were randomized based on uh, availability of donor or uh, not. The conclusion from the study the, um, uh, that allogenic transplant in CR1 improves overall survival for high-risk patients with no difference for uh, standard risk patient. Uh, so high-risk patient had um, uh, overall survival of 44% uh, compared to the control 11%, uh, which was significant. Um, <clears throat> the largest um, randomized control trial is uh, by Goldstone, in, uh, published in 2008, the MRC-UKLL-ECOG uh, study. Uh, which um, is also um, uh, based on the availability of donor randomized patients on um, uh, whether to receive the transplant or uh, not. Um, and um, the uh, survival curves, uh, the overall survival showed significant difference uh, favoring the uh, patients who had uh, received the uh, transplant. And those patients were standard risk ALL. Dr. Ahmed, uh, two minutes or so. 
So the um, conclusion from that study is allogenic transplant was the best treatment option for standard risk ALL patients in uh, remission. Um, and this is all done in the era where uh, pediatric inspired protocol were not uh, used. Uh, so uh, this is a very important point. Um, also from that study, the um, Philadelphia positive uh, patients, um, again, um, randomized whether to, to receive the transplant or not. And patients who received the transplant um, did better than the patients who did not receive the transplant. Uh, so um, the uh, conclusion was um, we should offer transplant for uh, patients who have Philadelphia positive ALL in uh, CR1. With the use of pediatric inspired protocol, this now is becoming a controversial issue. Um, the uh, pediatric inspired protocol have improved the outcomes. This is a uh, cross-trial comparison, which is um, just to withdraw uh, some uh, hypothesis generation, is not to withdraw any conclusion from it. Uh, patients who were in the arm of the uh, MRC trial uh, of, uh, that received the allotransplant have almost similar outcomes compared to the ones in the CCG and the FRAL uh, trial that uh, only treated with the pediatric inspired but did not uh, receive transplant. Um, so this brings the question of now um, when we are using more potent medications, we're no using more potent protocols, do we still need to uh, refer uh, patients uh, to transplant? So uh, in um, most of the uh, consensus that standard um, risk patients uh, who uh, respond well to the pediatric inspired protocol and achieve MRD negativity and do well on the chemotherapy, you probably don't want to, tra to transplant them. Uh, patients who uh, have high risk features or high risk uh, disease like Philadelphia positive or MLL, uh, then those are the patients that will uh, benefit mostly from the transplant. Um, again, the potent TKIs um, um, are achieving um, deeper and deeper uh, molecular uh, remissions in those patients, and we need more um, information to guide us in this uh, situation. Um, so uh, the, my conclusion is that treatment of ALL uh, remain a challenging situation and challenging uh, subject. We need more uh, clinical trials in, in this uh, field. Uh, the current preferred approach is to use pediatric inspired protocols. TKIs have improved outcomes in ALL, um, in Philadelphia positive ALL, and rituximab also improved, improved the outcomes in CD20 positive ALL. Um, MRD is now standard assessment method that we uh, need to use more. Uh, flow cytometry uh, MRD is available in most of the center. Uh, we need to, um, to uh, use it and also um, try to use the PCR, uh, which is sometimes uh, difficult to uh, arrange. Blinatumumab, we uh, heard uh, lots of um, discussion about it and uh, excitement. Um, and the allogenic transplant, which remain an unanswered question and uh, should be assessed case by case, um, and um, hopefully we'll have some answers after the meta-analysis from uh, Dr. Naif. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ahmed, for this uh, elegant. Uh, I guess we have probably limited time, maybe for one or two questions. Maybe I ask a question. I mean, uh, interesting, the rituximab uh, is not picked up uh, by the pediatric group. Um, I mean, the majority of our cases is CD20 negative. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it hasn't been uh, as a study in children for those patients and uh, uh, that kind of the things that went through. Um, and uh, rarely we face this, but I, I guess in the adult, you guys seeing more of the CD20 expression and based on that uh, randomized trial, it's being picked up. But 
for the one had negative CD20. I know there's some preclinical things that may indicate, but in your practice, mm -hmm. would you uh, treat them with, with uh, rituximab uh, uh, or not? Well, um, difficult question, but the, um, the study that was uh, presented by Dr. Absi, it's uh, uh, showing that uh, patients who receive treatment or during the treatment, uh, there will be overexpression sometimes with uh, CD20. And the ones that were negative in the, in the uh, beginning, they might be positive later on. Uh, so uh, this is, uh, uh, was not um, in, in included in the randomized co control trial that um, in, in 2017 was published. Uh, so uh, I think um, rituximab is, is one of the uh, medications that has low risk of uh, toxicity and if there is a potential benefit in, in those patients, we probably should use it um, in, in uh, such patients. A comment. Actually, we use it uh, in our center and standard uh, rituximab and C in uh, VBL regarding to an expression. Right. Yeah. One point in that trial that uh, one of the benefits of rituximab that they decreased the grade 3 and 4 um, uh, uh, allergic reaction to aspogenase. Mm -hmm. So it uh, was around 1% as compared to 10% in the arm with placebo. So one of the possible benefits effect of rituximab is that you can give aspogenase with less allergic reactions. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions?